Welcome everybody, you're watching Amateur Pool. I'm Josh Powell and today we're watching another match from the Crescent Lake Inn Tournament. Uh, this is a race to two eight ball winner side match. It's a double header today. So first up, we've got Josh Powell, and that's myself versus Greg Beagle. Race to two eight ball, winner moves on, loser goes to the loser side. Looks like I won the flip and went ahead and hit the break. I made something in the side there, so I will continue to shoot. Now we're playing a modified BCA rule, so it is open after the break. I do not have to make or take what I make, rather. I can shoot whatever I want here, so I'm kind of looking at those solids right now. Looks like I'm eyeballing the three. I'm checking to see if the four goes past the 13 because I could use that to break out the two. So I think I've, I've got somewhat of a path down in my head for these solids. I'm going to start with the three, and I'd like to shape an angle on the five so I could break the two up without the four, but I went straight for the four shape. It's not bad. I kind of like breaking the, the two ball out off the five, but the only, only challenge with that is it might push those stripes down and block the pocket. So I'm going to draw this back into the two ball. Miss the two ball. Didn't quite break it out all the way, so it's still stuck in there. I've got to get another plan together for it. If that 6 goes past the 10, I can shoot the 6 with follow and get that angle on the 5 to break out the 2. Or I can do it off of the 7 as well. Now, this is a pretty good angle to either hit the 5 or the 7 realistically. I'm not sure which one I like better. Uh, the five is an easier breakout. If I make the five, I can break the two out easier, but it's harder to shape the seven. So I think in this situation, I would I would have to shoot the seven first and try to break the two out with the seven because then I can shape the uh, five. But I'm looking at it a different way and looks like I might have screwed myself here. Only thing I have, only chance right now is to possibly bank the two ball cross corner but when I do that, I have to use top inside English, which makes the bank very hard to judge. But that's the only way I could get shapes on that on that seven ball. That's what I called there. Let's see if I can execute. Hmm. Nope. And I didn't follow the cue ball around for the shape, so I wouldn't have been able to make the seven anyway. Now we get our first look at Greg Beagle, gentleman in the blue shirt, chalking his stick and approaching the table. Obviously he's gonna start with that combo, it looks like. Good shot on that combo. He got pretty pretty close to that eight ball, so I think he wanted to shoot that uh, 14 ball next or whatever one that was on the rail. But since he, he came back onto that eight ball, he's gonna change his plan, it looks like. He can shoot this 11 and follow down for the 15, or really he could shape any of his balls off this, really. Yep, he came back for that 14. That was the one I think he was trying to go for first. Now he's developing a good run out in his head here, just looking things over, seeing what goes where. Probably roll this up for the 15, uh, I think is probably what he's gonna do here. He's got to get the right angle on that 15 so he doesn't have to mess with that two ball when he shapes his next ball. He's got that angle. I think he's probably going to have to nick the two ball a bit unless he draws out of it. If he draws it without hitting the two ball, he could come up to the middle of the table off two rails possibly. Let's see what he does. Okay, he just went ahead and hit the two ball. And I think that bump on the... Um, the 12 ball or whatever it is there was was pretty uh pretty good for him because it, it created enough space he can make that up in the corner and if he hits it with a little top he should roll up for a shot on the 10 ball and he's looking good oh he just missed the shot they are hard to judge when they're that close together but um Greg's a very good shot. I've played with Greg for a lot of years. And when I first started playing pool, Greg was a good player. And he gave me uh, quite a few tips to help me when I first began. So we appreciate that, Greg. 
Unfortunately, though, Greg, in this match, we are enemies. So I've got to put it to you here, my friend. Oh, just kidding. I'm not putting it to nobody. If I cannot make a shot in the side pocket, who are you going to put it to? You know, if you can't make a shot, then you can't win the game. So Greg's coming back up to the table. He's got a long shot on, on this uh, stripe ball up in the corner, but uh, it's one I fully expect him to make. He's looking at it. He might be a little uncomfortable with the shot because it is pretty long. It's taking an extra minute to, to get a, a good feel for the shot. Now he's ready to go. He's probably going to stun it right off the rail and just come out a little bit for this uh, 10 ball. He wants an angle on that 10 ball. Hmm. That's not much of an angle, really. That's, uh, that's pretty straight, it looks like, on that 10 ball. He might have a slight angle, but really the only option now is just to draw it a little bit. And he doesn't have to draw it much. He could realistically stop it there and end up with a shot on the 8. I like drawing it about 6 to 10 inches, though. Okay, he drifted over to the right a little bit, so that's going to make his cut a little thinner on that 8 ball. Not too much to think about here. You know, just make sure you make the shot. I mean, the, the, the one ball is preventing the scratch in the side pocket. Okay, you overcut it. You overcut it. Man, but where that one ball sits, <laughs> I don't think I can make it from this angle. And he's got me jammed up to where I can't really make the seven or the two clean. Might be, I mean, I can definitely combo the 2-7, but from that angle, it's a pretty awkward shot. And I think I'm, I'm covered up enough by the 2, so I can't go real first into the 7 without a mass A, which makes that shot real hard. So he's got me in a tough spot here. I'm calling the 7. Um, I remember what I did here is I hit the 2 with topspin and played a carom and sent the cue ball into the 7. Like that. Now I can make the one ball from here, or I could make the two ball either way. The one ball is a little easier because the, the cue ball is up against the rail, so the, the, the cueing is pretty awkward from here. So the one ball sitting in the pocket, I would rather shoot that and then shape the two ball rather than trying to take a harder shot on the two ball right now. So I'll put a stun with a little left spin on this. Come on over for the two. Want a little angle so I can come back up for the eight. You know, I don't want to have to draw straight up that rail. So I got a good angle there. If I use a little bottom and a little right, I should come over to where that chalk's sitting on the opposite rail. About the second diamond. Yep. All I gotta do is put the eight in. Bink, that is game number one, numero uno, my friends. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button while we watch this break. The score is 1-0. to zero. Josh leads. Greg did a cut break. I, I, got, I would have to look at it again, but I thought he broke hitting the head ball um, from the side and kind of cut it. It may have been the second ball back. I, I kind of missed it, to be honest with you. So you rewind it back. Leave me a comment. Let me know. Did he hit the head ball there or did he hit the second ball? Either way, he's going to shoot this nine down in the corner, it looks like. Now he's got a shape on that 14, uh, and he can either he can either uh, hit, roll this in with precision and shape the 10, or he can hit it hard with a little inside and kind of smash into his stack, which is what he did. Kind of, He had to break those out a little bit, so I like, I like his decision on doing that earlier rather than waiting, waiting until later in the match. You know, because once he, once he starts making balls... The breakout becomes more and more risky. If he can shoot that 15 in the side, which is kind of looks like that's what he was shaped or lining up to do, if he can make that in the side or the corner, he's in pretty good shape to possibly get out here. Oh, he nicked the one ball. That's going to give me ball in hand. 
Um, I mean, this is definitely a runnable table here, you know. I've got a, f <clears throat> it's a little, little tight. The shape's a little tight because I can't tell if the 11 ball's blocking the one to go in that corner. Um, if not, then I'll probably put the cue ball right between the seven and the one and shoot the seven into the side pocket or the, that upper corner pocket. I could do it either way. Um, and from there, everything's a lot more open, you know. If the one goes past the 11, then even easier. Okay, it looks like I shaped the one. If the one doesn't pass the 11, I can shoot the five and then try to drop down and bump the 11, actually. That would leave me a shot on the three or the two. But it looks like the one's gonna pass the 11. I'm lining up for it here. Yep. And I bumped that 11 a little bit. I'm not sure why I did that because now the the three and the five are kind of blocked up. So um, I am on a good shape with them right now. So I'll shoot them up in the up in the corner. I'll shoot the five first and draw back, and then probably shoot the three next. Yeah. Oh, I didn't want to be on that 11 ball though. It makes this shot so much harder. If I would have been off that 11 ball, I could have made the three, and then stopped there for the six or drew back for the two. Probably draw back for the two would be better there, and then make the two and shape the six, and I'm out, Jack. But nope, I had to draw back into that 11 ball and make this exponentially harder. Now I've, I'm probably, I can't hold it because I can't hit the bottom of the cue ball, so I'm probably going to follow up and try to shoot the six down past the 10 ball into this side pocket. Did a good job making the shot. But this shot right here is really the tester and the key shot to me running out. It's not easy by any means because it doesn't have a full pocket. In fact, I've got to cheat it off the rail. And I've got the angle that, that makes cheating it like that so much harder. If I would have came further up table, even though it's further away, it would have been an easier shot. <clears throat> yeah, I was worried about running into that 10, so I, I tried to cheat it too much and ended up once again getting screwed. Bang. Man, oh man. Greg's coming back to the table here. So Greg's looking at a one, two, three, four, five ball out here. I 100% know he is capable of this. Um, I've watched him do this countless numbers of times throughout the years. So um, I have a good, strong feeling that it's going to be one to one here in a second. He's going to start with that 11 ball. He'll probably draw back just slightly or stop it there for the uh, 12 ball over in this other corner. That was a good shot. Got him off the rail. Now he can make the 12 and just draw. And he can just draw up to about the middle of the table and shoot the 10 next. And then after he shoots the 10, he can make the 15 to shake the 8. So it's a pretty, pretty good out he's got here. All right, looks like he's, he is going to draw right up to about the middle of the table. Is a good shot. Now he's got the prime angle uh, to shoot that 10 and just bounce off this side rail back out maybe six inches, and then he'll have the prime angle to get on the eight. That was perfect shot. Perfect. Now there's a couple ways he can play this. He can use top inside, which makes the shot a little harder uh, to come down to the middle table, or he can use outside and go two rails. Um, See which way he goes. He's putting inside. Mm. Yeah, that's the downside to using that inside English. It makes the shot a little harder. He could have spun it right and just came two rails out to the middle of the table. The speed's a little trickier that way, for sure. Um, but the shot's a lot easier. You know, and it's better to have a shot on the eight ball than a not, is what I look at. I should be able to make this with top right spin and just come two rails up around the middle of the table and make the eight in that bottom right corner pocket. I under hit that a little bit, so I didn't come up quite far enough, uh, which left me a little trickier shot on this eight ball than I would have liked. I called it. I pointed at it. I'm down. I'm getting, getting ready to shoot it. Bang! That's game over. Josh wins two to zero. And that's your first match of this double header, ladies and gentlemen. Match number two is coming right up. We're going right into the action. No breaks here. Match number two features Chris and Martin. Or as he introduces himself, Martin. 
He's, <laughs> he's a good dude, man. He's from the, the, the UK. I think he said, he told me he lived in London for a lot of years and now he's here. He lives in uh, Arizona, but he was visiting some friends and, and he's a pool player. So he jumped into this pool tournament and I'll tell you, I was pretty impressed. He's a good shot. We're going to watch and take a look. So that's um, Chris that just broke. I think he broke dry, if I'm not mistaken, and that brings Martin up to the table. Martin's the gentleman in the black shirt and the backwards hat, chalking his stick and getting ready to rumble. Let's see what he's got. Surveying the table. Okay, nice pocket speed on that two ball. He left himself a prime shot on this three ball. If you watch Martin's um, approach and stance and stroke, you can tell he's, he's from the UK. Um, a lot of people from the UK were learn, learning how to play snooker first. Uh, snooker's huge there. So in snooker is a, a different game with a different stance and a different stroke altogether. So, but you can tell because they stand more square to the table, like they face their shot. And pool players tend to stand, stand a little sideways to their shot. Um, you watch, he'll, he'll square up to a shot and face his shot and then get down on the table and twist at his waist. His legs will stay and his feet will stay pointed towards his shot. Which is a completely different stance. A lot of pool pool stances. Um, most of the time, people either stand sideways or one foot goes sideways. In snooker stance, they they twist at the hip rather than at the feet. So, but it's pr pretty interesting. It's a it's a very very clinical stroke per se. It's a snooker stroke. You know, it's very um, mechanically correct. So it's a very good stroke. It's just um, I'm not sure if you can get the the feel needed that that a lot of pool requires, especially nine ball, when you when you put massive spin on the ball and whip it around. Um, I think that's the main difference, but it's a lot, it's a lot more correct to stroke as a snooker, snooker style stroke. Snooker style stroke, say that 10 times fast. As I'm talking about his stroke, he's doing a fine job of cleaning up this table. If that six ball goes past the nine into that corner pocket, I think he can get out here. We know the seven ball goes past the 10 into the corner. We can tell by looking at it here. So his six ball is his main concern right now. Oh, hit it a little hard if he's gonna shoot the six. He went too far, he got down and got the seven, but if he can roll forward and get in between the nine and 10, he might be able to shoot right where he's looking, might be able to shoot that six up into this top corner pocket. And if he can do that, his only challenge becomes shaping the eight um, because the eight ball's buried right now. He's going to have to bump it and then hope he ends up with a shape. Let's we'll see what he does. I'm kind of curious here. Like I said, he was a pretty impressive shot. I was, you know, first time any of us ever saw him up there. Um, so we never, we had no expectations when he started shooting. And, uh, you know, most people said the same thing. He was pretty impressive. It's a good shot. For your local local bar tournament, you know, you don't typically see new good players come in uh, that you don't already know. Most good players in an area know all the other good players in that same area. You notice that regardless of what area you go to, if you talk to any serious pool players in that area, uh, they're going to know the other pool players in that area as well. All right, moment of truth here. Let's see if he can uh, smash this key ball, shoot the six ball up into the corner, and at the same time, nick that 11 ball, which I'm not sure he's got the angle to do. He can nick the 11 ball and bust out his eight. If he doesn't have the angle for that, the only other option I can see would be to bank the six back down to this bottom left corner pocket uh, to the left of where he's standing right now, because that would give him the angle to separate the eight and the 11. But that shot is it's basically a Hail Mary. That's exactly the shot he tried to do. It was a good good attempt. It's a lot closer than I, uh, than I thought. It's a good looking shot. But he didn't get it done. So now Chris is coming up to the table. Chris is a good shot in his own right. He's got a wide open stripes layout and he's looking to, to take advantage. He's licking his lips and ready to eat. 
Let the big dog eat, Chris. Let's run him out. Okay. We'll shoot that 15 ball next. It's, he doesn't want to have to come back up table and get it later on. He's going to shoot it right now. All right, he's got a slight angle, so he'll probably shoot the 13 next and just bounce off the rail a little bit and then shoot the 10. Or he could shoot the 9 into this other pocket, just do a stop shot here. He rolled forward. I'm not sure he wanted to do that. Oh, okay, I, you know, silly me, I didn't even see the 10 ball down there, so I was calling it like he didn't have that 10 ball. Um, but rolling forward was a good option with that 10 ball down below. He got unlucky there hitting the, hitting the six ball, but um, he may still be able to get out here if he can cut this nine in. I'm not sure it goes past that other ball. He played a safety. So apparently it did not. He couldn't see past the eight enough to make the cut, so he played a pretty good safety. Now jump cues are allowed here. I mean, this shot is a, is a real tough one to jump, you know, so I'm not sure it's going to benefit Martin, but jump cues are allowed. I, I think Martin will probably end up kicking... Um, off the short rail up top by where we see Chris standing right now. He shoots off that rail. He's got a chance not only to make a good hit, but to make the six. And the good thing about that, if he hits it right and misses, the cue ball should roll back down by this corner pocket, leaving Chris a tough shot. You know, Chris would end up with a bank shot. Or behind the eight ball even, depending on how he makes contact with the six here. But I definitely like him kicking at it up off that top rail, which is what he's doing. This one in particular, I wouldn't try two rails, and it kind of looks like he's trying two rails on it. I would not do that because that sends the cue ball towards those stripes. Hmm. He did go two rails at it, and he underhit it a little bit, so there was no rail after contact. That's going to give Chris Ball in hand. going to line up on this 12 ball. He'll probably draw straight back. I mean, he he put the ball straight on the 12, so he's got to draw straight back here. Yep. And that automatically gives him an angle on the 9, which is awesome. He could roll it soft and play the 8 in the side, or he can go uh, two rails around for the 8 in the corner. He almost missed that 9 ball shot, though. Yeah, wiped his feet going in a couple times. I'm not sure he called that 3-rail bank shot, but there it is. He's going to put the 8 in the side. That's it for the first one. Chris stole it from him. One to nothing. Actually, Martin gave it to him. One nothing Chris. Race to two. So Chris is on the hill. And we'll see my see Martin's stance, how his feet are pointed towards his shot. Both toes are pointed towards his shot. It's a snicker style stance right there. It was a fine looking break though, young man. Uh, spread the balls nice. He made something, he's still at the table, and he's got a good opportunity to win this game here. So let's take a look and see what he does. Hope everyone's having a, a fantastic day out there today. Don't forget to hit that like button if you want to see some more content like this. We're here to support the amateurs in the game, um, create a little more awareness, and try to bring more people into this game. Pool is an awesome sport. It's one of my favorite sports, and I believe it should be a lot bigger than it is today. We need more viewership, ultimately, is what it boils down to. More viewership equals bigger sponsorships equals more money, which is going to make more people want to play this game. You know, that's uh, that's what Pool needs. It needs a, a financial interjection from sponsorships, which is only going to come from viewership. So definitely hit the like button, share it. Subscribe. I'm going to keep this content rolling out. If you love pool like I do, help me out. So it looks like uh, Martin played a stripe. The nine ball is his biggest challenge with stripes. You know, that's going to be a tough way to get out here. He's got the 11 ball right now, and he might have enough angle to bump the two into the nine and maybe spread the nine open. Let's see what he does. Nope, he didn't like breaking out the nine there. He's got to do it, though, if he wants to, to win without his opponent getting a shot. He's got to do it. That, I think that was his best ball to do it from. So if he didn't have the angle to do it there, which I kind of think he might have if he had stunned 
Um, he should have played something else and got an angle on that. But let's see what his uh, his thoughts are here. See how he's going to do it. That could have been another opportunity to get at that nine. That one was a little more risky. You could have played it with right spin and hit it harder off that rail and spun it down towards the nine. That one would have been more risky. You know, I definitely don't fault him for trying to break that out there. But he did have a shot to do it, I believe. Okay, he's real methodical. He's thinking about every shot, which is absolutely what you should be doing. You know, you should think your shots out realistically, not just, oh, if I hit it here, the cue ball's going over there somewhere. You think exactly where can I make that cue ball go and how hard do I want to hit it to end up at the right spot. He tried to get up and break that nine off that shot and hit too much draw. Uh, as a result, the, the cue ball came closer to that corner pocket and, and scratched off of the four. So it's a good try. He had to try something there. I definitely don't fault him for doing it. Uh, just a little, a little under-executed, we're going to say. Under-executed, you know. He drew it a little too much ultimately is what happened. Less draw there, and he might have uh, might have come up and hit that nine and broke it free. Now, Chris is no dummy. He's going to start with that seven ball because he wants to try to run out. He knows if he doesn't, Martin can. He's going to start with that seven ball, and he still has the four ball down there to get his two ball free. So I really like the way he's looking at this table. I personally would have rolled the cue ball way up to the top end of the table to shoot the five ball at next. Uh, he rolled it short, so now he's going to have to take his four ball, which is going to it's going to eliminate the breakout ball for that uh, that two ball. Yeah, he's running out of bullets, so to speak. You know, the bullets are the balls you have left to, to try to break out your trouble ball. He's going to try to draw into it here. Did he get it? Can't see. Nope, he missed it. Yeah, now he's in trouble. You know, now you start thinking, oh shh, diddle bat, what can I do here? And really, there's not, he definitely, if the nine doesn't go now, he doesn't want to mess with that two ball. I'm not sure what I would do here. I might kick two rails at the five. Oh, he, he opened up the, the nine ball. Yeah, that's, a, that's the last thing I would have wanted to do there, you know, is to open up that nine ball. That's going to leave Martin an open chance at a run out here. Doesn't have much work to do here. He's just got to play uh, good shots and uh, shape his balls. I didn't say shake his balls. I said shape his balls. Calm down back there, little Timmy. Calm down. He's going to start with the nine. The only way I like starting with the nine if his, his plan is to stun off the rail, run into the two, and stop right there for the 15. <clears throat> he could draw all the way back for like the 15 in the side, but okay, that's what he did. He, he ran into the two. But realistically, now he has a harder shot on the 15 than he had before, I think. You know, it's a little further away. I might have shot the 15 first on that run out, but I'm not sure. Let me know in the comments which way you would have gone with that. You know, 15 first or 9 first the way he played it. Whatever that one was down there, I think it was a 9. Still, though, he's got a shot here. He can finish this run out. He's just going to use top on this. Good shot, good shot, good shot. He wanted to come down for the eight in the side because the two's blocking the corner. And I think he did come down far enough for it. It's just a lot a lot thinner cut than he wanted, I'll tell you that. He wanted to be almost straight in on that thing. He cuts this in and we got ourselves a match. Yes, sir. One to one we're looking at. Chris won the, the flip, so he gets to break. It's hill to hill and Chris's break. Now, if Chris breaks and runs there, Martin's done, you know. But it looks like a dry break, so that's not going to happen. That's going to bring Martin up to the table here. And Martin's going to look to punish Chris for that dry break. Only problem is he's in a tough starting spot here. If he can see in between the nine or the five and the three, I would shoot the nine. It'll, if it doesn't go clean, it'll go off of the one ball. And I definitely like stripes a lot better than solids for the run out here. The two balls kind of in an awkward position is the main reason. If the two ball wasn't there, then either ball set would be fine. But I like, I like stripes better because of the two ball. Okay, it went clean. That was a good shot. He came down a little far for this, no? 
I don't know what his plan is. He might be able to make a combo into the side pocket there, but the eight ball might be blocking that up. He's uh, He might be in trouble here. Let's see what he comes up with. I mean, jump sticks are allowed, so he could make that combo on a jump shot if he needs to. But Man, that makes the shot a lot harder. Okay, he's going to put a little swerve on the ball. He's going to jack his stick up, hit bottom left, and curve the cue ball a little bit. Well done. Good shot there, Martin. Good shot, old chap, as they say over there in the UK. To be fair. <laughs> All right. Ah, does that... He's shooting... He's got to be shooting the 10 ball, right? Because the 11 doesn't go past the 8. So he's going to shoot the 10, and he'll probably pop out. For, ooh, he went a little far, I think. I think he hit that a little harder than he intended, or that he wanted to, anyway. He might be able to shoot the 13 in between the 6-1. In fact, as long as he doesn't hit the 1 and he aims more towards the 6, I think that corner pocket can be pretty big pocket because it'll go in off of the 6 pretty easy. We'll see if he's doing that. He kind of looked like he was shooting a combo, or maybe maybe it goes past the 11 into the side. It sure does. What a nice shot there. Oh, and he put that two ball in a prime location. Um, because he can play his ball off of that into the side, and that gives him a lot of control. So if he shoots his 15 and just drifts out a little bit, drifts away from the rail slightly, like that, that's perfect. Now what he can do is play this other stripe off of the two into the side pocket with draw. And he'll bring his cue ball back to about where it is now. And then he can shoot the 11 into the other side and he's got a real easy shot on the eight. He should be out here. That's an easy path. This ball is automatic into the side pocket. All he's got to do is hit the right side of the two with it. And it's automatic. You almost can't miss it. What's he looking at here? See, he might not see that shot off the two ball. Oh, no, I don't think he does. That was a pretty easy out there. I think he's missing it. Missing his opportunity. Yeah, he's trying to go for the hard shape on that other ball. What is that? The 14 ball, I think. He's trying to, oh, man. So this is a thin shape. It's a, it's a very uncomfortable shot because the two balls, it's not hindering your shot on the 14, but it makes it uncomfortable because mentally you see that ball as a hindrance. And even though it's not really in the way, something mentally inside says, hey, man, make sure you don't hit that two ball, you know? <laughs> and then you end up missing your shot a lot of times. It happens. Oh, yep. It's very likely what happened to him there. You know, I can't say for sure. I don't know what's in his mind, but that happens often. Now Chris has got given Chris an opportunity to take this match here. Remember, they're hill hill. So Chris runs this out, and it is game over, sucker. All right, he's going to shoot this one with a little draw. Looking good, looking good. Shoot the three ball with a little stun, probably, and just come off the rail a little bit for the six. That's the way I would do it. Nice, nice. Now he can shoot the six with either stun, or he could probably shoot a little follow and just come either in between the five four for the shot on the two, or he could try to get a speed right and shoot the five next, which is what I would prefer. Prefer him shooting the five next. Yep, that's a good shot for that five ball. Oh, he's looking at shooting the four down table first because he got perfect on it. And I don't blame him one bit. This is nice. It's a nice setup. Just stop there for the same shot on the five. Now he can use top right on this one or just stun. Come off that side rail, the long rail, uh, and back out towards the middle of the table for the two in the side. And he's looking good here. Yes, sir. He came up a little short on that one. He definitely wanted to come around to the middle of the table. So as a result, he's going to change his plan and shoot the seven next. This will still work out just fine. He has to buckle down and make sure he makes a shot. So it's a little more difficult to get out this way. Good shot, but mm, 
See, they made the, the shape on that is a lot tougher from the seven. He would have loved to have shot the two first with a stop shot and then shot the seven and shaped the eight, you know, but um, he just didn't hit that five hard enough into the corner. So he didn't bounce out far enough to, to go that way uh, to get out. And now it may cost him, you know, if he can't make this two past the stripe or somewhere else, it might cost him. Not, I don't see a good safety here, really, you know, it's hard to see a good safety here. Any safety is going to be tough. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if Martin's going to be able to see that stripe or not. He may be able to. Uh, if he can, I think it's game over. If he can't, Chris may live to fight another day. Okay, he's giving it a long look and a hard look here. Yeah, it doesn't look. He's, he's looking at alternate routes here, so I don't think he can see it clean. His next available option would be to kick it one rail, I think, you know. That's the easiest way. you just real close to that eight ball. Uh, don't hit the eight ball, but real close to it off this rail and, and make the kick shot. And as long as he doesn't end up behind the two ball afterwards, he's going to have a good shot on the eight in the side. He's just, uh, you know, he's got to buckle down and do his best to stroke it smooth, firm. Don't second guess where he's aiming the kick shot at. Um, usually your first instinct on those kick shots is correct where you looked at it on the aim. The only thing you have to do after that is trust your stroke and hit it good, solid, clean, smooth stroke. He did great with that one. Went two rails at it. Whether I don't know he meant to or not, but it looked great. It was a great shot, so we're going to assume he meant to do it off two rails. Uh, and that, that lent for a great shape on this eight ball he's going to put it in the side and that should be the match if he makes it if he misses it chris is going to have a good opportunity to take this from him got it that's all she wrote ladies and gentlemen i appreciate everybody out there don't forget to subscribe leave a comment hit that like button and we'll catch you on the next video peace